So in this video, we're going to be talking about how the uprising of an Eastern king against the Romans uh, laid bare just how divided and uh, irreconcilable the Roman nobility was. So the uh, trouble again involves a client kingdom, this time the client kingdom of Pontus. Uh, this actually goes back a little bit further. It had only been a couple of decades since the Romans had become the dominant force in the Aegean uh, area after defeating uh, Macedon at the Battle of Pydna, 168, as marked on the map here. And um, perhaps uh, uh, just as seminally, the um, kingdom of Pergamum uh, uh, devolves to Roman rulership. In a, in a very unusual way, the king of Pergamum decides that he uh, uh, um, will make the citizens of Rome his heir. And so when the king dies in 133, Pergamum, the, uh, the kingdom at the western end of Anatolia, the Romans call Asia Minor, uh, uh, becomes a Roman province uh, without benefit of, of war or conquest and uh, uh, becomes this Roman enclave, a center of, of Roman um, business and power and industry and a, a cultural influence throughout the Aegean and the Black Sea area. And this is, uh, this, uh, is, a, is a major turning point um, uh, it rouses the people of, of Anatolia. When Pergamum becomes the Roman province of Asia Minor, it's very clear that Roman domination over the East is not a passing thing, that they are rising to challenge and replace the Hellenistic empires. And this provokes a lot of reactions among people that want um, uh, local identity to be more important, to, uh, to not be subjected to these Western uh, barbarians. Uh, and in this lies the capacity of, of Pontus to be a major uh, influencer because the king of Pontus, a man named Mithridates, uh, is is a man filled with ambition, filled with uh, um, the the capacity for survival. Uh, the stories about him are are legion. Um, you know, he's supposed to have killed a lion as a young boy, and he's often depicted wearing the head of the lion and and its uh, its pelt. Uh, he's supposed to have survived through the treacherous infighting of his royal family by uh, taking poisons of all different kinds throughout his life, so that he. He becomes uh, uh, inured and immune to uh, the toxicity of, of poisoning. Um, these are the kinds of stories that are told about Mithridates, and uh, his 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 reason for being is is to is to make his kingdom Pontus uh, uh, strong and powerful with him in control and to expand the influence of Pontus over the rest of Anatolia. Uh, this obviously would be at the expense of the Romans. And so um, Mithridates uh, 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 um, manages to harness uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concern about the rise of Roman power over this part of the world uh, and, and uh, presents himself as, as an alternative, as the anti-Roman, even more effectively than Jugurtha and Numidia, and uh, uh, he he provokes a direct challenge to Rome by uh, by bringing about a a crisis designed to force Rome to attack him at a moment when he knows that Rome is embroiled in in this conflict. It's just gotten through the uh, um, the social war. Um, uh, it is uh, uh, it is Rome is is at its most internally divided. Uh, Mithridates uh, is is determined to uh, to expose Rome's weakness and to uh, and to crush Rome's power over this part of the world. And so he uh, he sends out agents throughout the Roman province of of Asia 
what is formerly the Kingdom of Pergamum, he sends agents throughout this territory with sealed orders to be open on a particular day. Uh, and, you know, when he, uh, when his agents open these orders, they, of course, say to kill all the Romans and Italians. And so there's a one-day massacre of thousands of Romans and Italians throughout Asia province. And the result of this is Rome must go to war at the, uh, at the worst possible time. Um, and so, you know, the, the readings that we have are all about uh, uh, Mithridates as, uh, as, a, as a new kind of Hannibal, a Hannibal that uh, comes from within and that is in reaction to Rome's internal problems, much as Hannibal had been a reaction to Rome's rise as an empire. Mithridates is, is, is a, is a, is a, uh, is a response to, um, uh, and a and a and a you know for for Roman historians, Mithridates sort of rises up as a as a nemesis to uh, to what Rome is facing in its uh, its own internal uh, conflict, uh, and you know this is a, a symbolized of course by the the towering figures of the time Marius who is beloved by the people and uh, and by the army he is, saved Rome twice first against Jugurtha but much more importantly by fending off the Germans uh, by uh, by saving Rome from the Cimbri and the Teutones after the disaster of the Battle of Arausio demonstrating the uh, supremacy of the popular's point of view that the faith and trust of the Romans should be invested in um, in individuals who have proven themselves champions rather than in the grinding gears of institutions and systems that empower the senatorial elites uh, um, at the expense of the Romans and put incompetent uh, uh, um, you know uh, noblemen in charge uh, who are more concerned with uh, with position and family. Um, than they are with uh, their ability to to bring Rome uh, and, and to salvage the empire. So uh, um, Marius is is a hero uh, to most of Rome. Uh, uh, the 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 enemy of the of the optimates and the conservative elites. Uh, but uh, but you know the the masses in the army uh, all are are devoted to Marius, and his opponent Sulla is is. Is not the uh, is not correspondingly beloved by his faction. Uh, Sulla um, is comes from a uh, a a family that had waned in influence uh, and had uh, uh, you know fallen low in terms of property and wealth. Uh, he sort of creates, he manufactures his own luck. Uh, his name is Lucius Cornelius Sulla, and he appends himself the the extra cognomen Felix, the lucky. But uh, Sulla is very much someone who makes his own luck. He 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 takes his opportunities, and if the opportunities don't present themselves, he he creates them. Uh, um, and so, uh, you know, Sulla is is an is an upstart, is a maverick. Uh, and the 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 optimates, the senatorial conservative elite, are as leery of him, someone who draws attention and 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 loyalty and uh, to himself, and is this dynamic individual. That's the kind of thing that uh, runs against the the idea of collective anonymous rule that the Senate is is fighting to restore. And so, even though Sulla is, is is deeply conservative and believes in the power of the Senate, um, he is not, in 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 a sense, he is not exactly one of them. Nonetheless, he is he is deadly opposed to Marius, and uh, this comes to the fore uh, when the war with Mithridates comes. Uh, Sulla had distinguished himself in the social war. He had was one of the few generals in the social war that had been successful on the Roman side. Marius didn't fight in the social war. We don't know why. He might have had a stroke. Um, but he's inactive during this time. He's a private citizen. He's retired. He's an old man. Um, this is, you know, decades after the uh, the Jugurthan War and the, the Cimbri. Um, and now, uh, you know, 
Sula is the consul. Sula had been elected consul, and so uh, when the war with Mithridates comes, it, it becomes his responsibility. He draws the lot and, and, and has the responsibility, the portfolio for this war. And so as consul, Sula goes off to Nola, which is an area in central Italy, to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to levy his troops and to begin training them very quickly so they can leave Italy and go fight Mithridates. Um, and while Sulla is training his army uh, under his, for, you know, to take the, the command against Mithridates, uh, Marius' supporters demand that this command be taken away from Sulla because Sulla is one of the uh, one of the optimates, one of the conservative elite, represents the uh, everything that had gone wrong at Arausio represents the incompetence of nobility. Even though Sulla himself is an excellent general, um, he's one of them. And the people, and Marius' supporters, uh, um, foment the people into demanding that Marius be given this command, even though Marius is a private citizen. He has no imperium, has no right to command. Um, the command legally and traditionally, 500 years of tradition, belongs to Sulla. And so a law gets passed very riotously in the uh, in the assembly that takes the command away from uh, uh, from from Sulla and gives it to Marius. It's passed with uh, with thuggery, with you know uh, with uh, you know people with clubs intimidating other voters and, and uh, tribunes, uh, and uh, uh, the the law itself uh, um, turns Rome into turmoil. That uh, you know this is a blatant disregard for uh, for all of Roman tradition. Uh, uh, Rome is in immensely divided and in and, and extreme uh, turbulence, and uh, it breaks out into mob riots, and there's, uh, there's pandemonium in Rome, um, bloodshed and, uh, and violence. Uh, reports reach Sulla about this at Nola. He even hears that uh, hears a false rumor that the other consul has been killed. Um, it turns out he'd been injured, but not killed. But um, Sulla has to make a decision. His responsibility as consul is now to restore order in Rome. And the way in which he goes about doing that uh, is um, to take his army and march upon the city of Rome with it and to use his army, the, uh, the resources he has at his command, to uh, um, to uh, to to bring peace, to enforce peace, but to 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 break the uh, to to break the, uh, um, the 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 rioting and to uh, uh, and to enforce law and order. This had never been done. Not only has this never been done, but it is uh, uh, it is um, it is blasphemous to do so. It is it is against religious law uh, for uh, the Roman army at arms to pass over the sacred boundary, the pomerium. Uh, uh, this is an inviolable rule that goes back deep into Roman history from, uh, uh, from, from, it, it's a, from its origins. Um, this is the origin of, of the, the part of the point of the sacred boundary and the Roman sense of, you know, of, of things Roman being within it and beyond it is the, is the domain of the military. And, you know, only once you pass beyond the pomerium as a general do you put on the red cape uh, and uh, uh, and and take the oaths and assume the role of a general. You pass from a consul to a general by passing over the pomerium uh, and and undertaking these rituals. Um, all of this is 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 uh, is deeply embedded in Roman culture. So uh, Sulla, even though it's, he does what is necessary to restore order in Rome. Um, creates a, a terrible precedent by crossing the sacred boundary with his army. Worse yet, uh, um, he, he, he creates an even worse precedent by marching on Rome with an army at his command. This is, uh, once again, remember, these are headcount armies that uh, have focused their identity around the eagles. This has had a, a, a generation or two to establish itself. Um, the 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 identity of the armies is is based around the legion, and these headcount armies are are attached to their generals, 
more than they are to to uh, to Rome because they're not fighting for their land back home. They're fighting for their legion. They're fighting for their eagle. They're fighting for their commander. And so, this is a general leading uh, um, armed forces. Uh, uh, loyal to him against the city of Rome. However necessary it was, it creates a disastrous precedent that would become permanently um, the vulnerability of the, of the Roman Empire. From this point onward, uh, Rome is, is forever at the mercy of, of Roman generals um, you know, marching with the, their own loyal troops at their back from, from whatever province, from whatever location. Um, it happens over and over again. Um, the city of Rome, thanks to Sulla, and uh, thanks to Marius having created the headcount army, um, these two things together, um, from this point on where the city of Rome is permanently vulnerable um, to its uh, its its generals and its governors. Um, once uh, um, Sulla restores order in Rome, uh, he then uh, um, passes a few reforms, but he has to immediately leave to go fight Mithridates. This can't be delayed. And so, um, you know, Sulla very hurriedly leaves Italy uh, and, em and embarks for, uh, for uh, Anatolia. As soon as he's gone, the forces of Marius and his uh, his populist ally Cinna um, raise armies of their own and take the city of Rome by coup. Uh, this is, uh, you know, Sulla's precedent is immediately repeated by Marius and Cinna marching on Rome with their own troops, taking command of Rome in a in a in a coup that uh, uh, that that turns Rome into a one party populist state. And Marius reinforces this by instituting proscriptions. Um, what proscriptions are is uh, um, Marius publishes a list of his enemies, a list of optimates, a list of conservative senatorial elite um, that it is okay to kill. And so uh, the uh, this becomes not only is it okay to kill them, but there's a reward because uh, you know if you bring back the head, and this is literally you bring back the head of the person that you killed, you get a portion of their estate, and the head is mounted on a spear in the Roman Forum on the rostra. This is the the origin of of this idea of the mounted head of the executed enemy. Um, being displayed for the public to see in an, in a, in an act of, of official terrorism. Uh, and so, you know, the, the streets of Rome are, are, are running with blood, this time officially sanctioned by the revolutionary government installed by Marius. And there are a number of uh, conservative elites who uh, kill themselves in order to retain some dignity rather than falling to some, you know, some random Roman opportunist who sees an opportunity for, for wealth and favor of the Marian regime. Uh, the uh, Marius uh, dies not long after this, but the, uh, the Marian regime is, uh, is kept up by Kenna and, and uh, by Carbo, who comes alongside him. And this endures for, you know, the three years or so that uh, Sulla is off in the east. And the Marian regime fixes all the elections, only populists are running. This is a one-party state. Uh, Sulla is declared a public enemy. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, an, an, an additional army is sent after him to fight against Mithridates and to, uh, to, to arrest uh, uh, Sulla. Um, which, uh, you know, uh, which uh, never actually happens. Uh, so Sulla is now in the position of hearing all this going on at Rome, knowing that uh, his responsibility, his duty to, uh, to, to Roman history, to, to the greatness of Rome, his duty is to come back and fix things. And so uh, he, uh, he ends the war with Mithridates uh, with, uh, on, a, on a relatively weak note. You know, essentially, he extracts a treaty from Mithridates in which uh, Mithridates promises very, very sincerely uh, not to, uh, to attack any other states uh, and not to continue his, uh, his 
uh, his policy of, of aggression and expansionism. Uh, that Sulan has to accept this because he must return home. And Mithridates has to be dealt with later by others. Um, so uh, Sulla returns home at the head of his army and marches on Rome a second time. And so uh, there is a horrible battle before the gates of Rome itself, before the Colleen gates. Uh, uh, the Sulan army fights against the Marian army. And this is Romans fighting Romans, not even you know just on behalf of their leaders, but on behalf of 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 these antithetical, incompatible ideas of what Rome should be. Um, you know the the Sulans fighting for Roman tradition and the past and the preeminence of the Senate, uh, and and you know the this old Roman idea. You know the 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 farmer soldier, the you know the kinkinatus. You know the 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 idea of of self sacrificing Roman virtue in the city of Rome, and the Marians are fighting for uh, you know what Rome is now, which is this dominant power, not just a city but but an empire, a city that rules over others and and that must have a new kind of strength that can't rely on you know rotating through the nobility and, and all the other things. So uh, this is this is uh, Romans fighting Romans over the idea of Rome. Um, there's uh, some parallels here to the Peloponnesian War, where the where the Spartans and the Athenians were fighting over what it means to be Greek. Uh, uh, here, the Romans are fighting over over the the vision of of what Rome is going to be. Uh, Sulla wins this very bloody battle and marches again into the city, uh, um, but this time he arranges for it to be done in a uh, in an orderly and legal way. He keeps his army outside of the city and uh, discharges them as soon as everything is safe. Some of them are sent to fight against other Marians elsewhere in uh, in North Africa and Spain. Sulla remains outside the city and uh, and arranges to be called upon to uh, uh, to enter into the city as a dictator. The first time this office had been used in 120 years. And uh, um, the job of the dictator traditionally is to, uh, to, uh, to restore things back to the way that they were after a dangerous crisis. That's the job of the dictator, and then resign. And this is what Sula does. Um, Sula is, uh, is, uh, uh, becomes dictator in order to restore the traditional Roman constitution after having been uh, perverted by, uh, by the Marians in their, in their revolutionary coup. And so, you know, he places the Senate uh, at the, at the, uh, back in his position of, of advisory preeminence, and uh, he diminishes the role of the plebeian um, you know, tribunes, and uh, uh, he you know, rearranges the court system, and he undertakes a number of reforms that are designed to restore the old Roman constitution, the old Republican ways. Uh, and uh, then there's an interim year in which uh, he serves as uh, as consul with his protege uh, Metellus Pius, and then he uh, he stands down and uh, uh, holds free elections. And this is uh, this is his means of testing whether things are back to the way that they were before all this happened. And he takes it as a positive sign that one of his enemies is elected to one of the two consulships. Um, the, the consuls for, uh, for that year, for 78, uh, one is, uh, is a populist and one is an optimate. And this is, uh, this is proof that, you know, things are working normally, that, um, uh, the the Rome is not functioning simply in a one party lockstep kind of way. Uh, so Sulu stands down and retires from public life, uh, and uh, actually dies not long afterwards. Um, the the durability of the Sulan constitution is open to question because um, the uh, um, things had changed so much. 
it's uh, it's it's uh, debatable how much of this could endure. A lot of what Sulla's uh, instituted in his reforms was undone uh, over the next twenty or thirty years. But he does restore order. He does restore uh, stability to Rome uh, uh, at uh, at at a crucial point where that had been overturned by the recklessness of Marius and Cinna. Um and the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the main precedent that, that he establishes here, uh, however, is the negative one. The march on Rome is the legacy that Sulla leaves. Um, you may notice that, uh, you know, I'm working to present Sulla in a, in a positive light here, uh, or at least to to represent where Sulla is coming from. Part of the reason for this is that Sulla has uh, quickly develops a very negative reputation. The reason for this is relatively straightforward. Uh, you know, Sulla doesn't command a lot of of love and popularity uh, amongst the people the way people somebody like Marius does. He doesn't even command love and popularity amongst his own his own conservative faction. But more to the point, Sulla is on the losing side. The Populares eventually win. The Populares win with Julius Caesar and Octavian, uh, and the the, the Optimates, Sulla's faction, are are uh, are the losers in this. And so Sulla is presented as a monster in the histories, um, and in particular. Uh, so what Sulla does when he when, after he wins the Battle of the Colian Gates. Uh, uh, to ensure that um, the city of Rome is not a viper's nest full of uh, populares who are going to uh, attack and undermine uh, everything that he does, especially since so many of, of his own side had been slaughtered. He has very few people to support him. Uh, Sula institutes a, a set of proscriptions of his own. And so he orders the, the execution of a number of leaders of the populares. Um, and so in the, in the Roman history, Sulla gets credit for the idea of proscriptions, the, this list of people that, uh, that can be killed um, for, uh, in, return for, in return for reward as a means of, um, uh, as a means of, of, of wiping out the other faction. But what's usually overlooked is the fact that it's Marius who institutes the proscriptions. In fact, there's two rounds of proscriptions um, under the uh, uh, under the the revolutionary government, one under Marius, and then another one right before Sulla arrives. A huge purge of you know remaining uh, conservative elite leaders um, before Sulla can uh, can enter the city, uh, and so you know Sulla uh, uh, instituting proscriptions. Partly this is revenge. Partly this is ruthlessness because Sulla is a very ruthless man. Um, but it is not an innovation. And he does this before becoming dictator. So it's also not an abuse of dictatorial powers, despite the fact that uh, some historians claim that it is. Um, but the reverberations of this, uh, the, the Marius and Sulla uh, uh, fall out of the history at this point. Both of them are dead. And the, the consequences of this uh, uh, under uh, the, the subsequent decades, the, the wake left behind by these towering figures, Marius and Sulla, will be the subject of, uh, of our continuing exploration of the breakdown of the Republic. And uh, that's that.